Uh, as Bernard said here, my talk today will mainly focus on quantum state oscillations in natural drinking water and uh, if and how they may uh, affect human health. And uh, <clears throat> some years ago, I met Claude Bertels from Germany and uh, he was talking about the Vincent factor or the Vincent profile and I became interested because uh, it seemed to me that it was a very convenient and easy way to calculate the loss or accumulation of energy based on the level of entropy in water. And uh, it can be easily uh, measured from pH and the redox potential in water uh, according to this uh, uh, diagram. <coughs> And here we have the redox potential in, in a logarithmic scale. And according to the theory, the diagram can be divided in four different sectors. In the first sector, which is a system which is under continuous uh, change and development, we will find any healthy food and beverage. And uh, as you can see, it's acidic. <coughs> it's also reductive, which means that there is a lot of protons and a lot of electrons, so perhaps we can recognize ourselves in the easy water or the coherent domains of water. Uh, in the second zone, it's still acidic, but it's more oxidative, and here we will have a growth of some fungus, for instance, and we will find uh, uh, sterilized food and beverages in this sector. If we turn to the third zone, <coughs> we can see that it's still oxidative, but now it's turned to a more alkaline state. And here we will have a growth of a lot of bacteria and virus, and uh, we will also have a degradation, decomposition of, of various compounds, and we will find chlorinated water in this sector. And then we have uh, the fourth theon, it's considered more or less as a chaotic environment, an infectic environment with a growth of various uh, bacteria. So what we're looking for here actually is a <coughs> system where we have the energy uh, distributed into the liquid state of water and whether it's a continuous change of energy uh, with environment. So I think that the first sector here is uh, the choice. And uh, we know from, from the clustering model of water that organized <coughs> structure in nature and in water can be addressed along two pathways. The first is the formation of dissipative structures, and the second is that there is some kind of quantum correlation. And the dissipative structure is formed more or less directly out of chaos, and that the system is far from equilibrium. And uh, there is a start of a self-regulatory process. So it seems that this system can pick up quantum fluctuations, and it turns the entire system into a fractal state. And we have done many measurements that really show this. And here is just one example of the water droplet with coherent domains involved. And normally they are silent, but they can pick up these quantum fluctuations and turn the entire uh, bulk volume of water into a coherent state. <coughs> uh, and it's uh, reductive and it's acidic, so it's quite comparable to uh, the Vincent factor. And, uh, we decided to, to uh, besides measuring the Vincent factor, also measure uh, fractality as, a, as an estimate of a quantum relation or quantum connection. Uh, so uh, the Vincent factor can be calculated from the ratio of relative hydrogen and resistivity of the system. And the relative hydrogen can be can be corrected for variations, or redox potential can be corrected for variation in pH, and we get relative hydrogen. So we are looking for a low QV value, which means a low uh, relative hydrogen or a big resistivity in the system. And that means that we need a lot of electrons, and also that ions are bound into structure. And uh, the optimal value of the QV value here is located in the green triangle, which means a pH around 7 and relative hydrogen between 22 and 24. So based on these ideas, we collected some water samples from 
from uh, my part of Sweden. <clears throat> Just for your orientation, here we have Copenhagen to the left, and 300 kilometers northeast we will find Stockholm. Uh, so uh, the tap water was collected from different cities in this area, and we expected that the water should be quite different because they were from different sources. Uh, while the spring waters were collected from a very narrow uh, area, actually, but it's a, a clean area, and there are not many farmers living there, not many people living there, so we consider as, that the water should be relatively good. Uh, so this diagram here shows uh, the bioelectrochemical coordinates in spring water. So we have the spring waters to the left, and then we, we analyzed it in a controlled condition, ordinary um, spring water, and in a conditioned state. And that means that we have exposed the water during one hour for a fractal coherent light. We have developed a technology which make a change in actually ordinary light, visible light and also infrared light. And uh, then we measure pH, redox potential, and conductivity and calculate the relative hydrogen resistivity, QB value, and two values for fractality. It, DFA means the trend of fluctuation analysis and FD fractal dimension. And uh, this was based on an infrared thermal technology where we're measuring the surface temperature and calculated uh, DFA data from numerical values of the changes in temperature. And uh, we found, uh, yeah, let's say, two waters here which were relatively good according to the QV value. Uh, the one within red here it has a QV value of 0.001, mainly dependent on that the resistivity of this water was quite high. And the uh, relative was also high, but mainly I think its value depends on the resistivity as it was high. And the other one is the green water here where the resistivity was 0.01. And here the relative hydrogen was low. So I think um, these two waters were the best we could find in this uh, district. And uh, looking at the QB value, we found that it seems that it's completely insensitive to conditioning. There is no change between the values, control and conditioning, while the DFA value is actually increasing in all cases. So it seems that the DFA value is very sensitive to a quantum uh, connect connectedness. And fractal dimension, which actually was Calculated on the same images was also insensitive, mainly dependent on that the DFA values are calculated on numerical values and fractal dimension on black and white images. <clears throat> so, if you look at tap water, there was actually no good tap water. We found three of them that were relatively good the ones here in light yellow, they were between 0.04 and 0.005. Uh, and still, the QB value is insensitive to, to uh, conditioning, while the DFA value in all waters have also increased to come closer to one, which is the optimal value. And we also analyzed some bottled waters. We found one which was good according to the QB value. Here it was actually Norwegian water, but easily bought in Swedish shops. And the DFA value was also increased here in all cases. And here we have the distribution of the Vincent factor in all three waters. Um, there was no water located in the green triangle, so there was no optimal water according to the Vincent factor. We found uh, four, five of them in the first sector, so they seem to be relatively good. Most remarkable here, perhaps, is the um, tap waters. They are located in the fourth sector, all of them. They are clustering together, even though they are 
collected from different areas in this district. But I think that this depends on that uh, all tap waters in Sweden are treated in a similar way, perhaps in most of Europe, uh, based on chemical uh, regulations and also health regulations. Um, so I think that um, uh, the results here indicate that they are not recommendable for human drinking according to the Vincent factor. And I can also say that all waters are chlorinated, of course. And the one here at the arrow, that was the water we, we separated or, or decided to use for our clinical study. Even though it's not the optimum water, optimal water here, I think it's, it's a good mineral water according to ordinary standards. We also did a correlation between the DFA and cubic value in tap and bottled water added together in uh, spring water separated uh, in control and after conditioning and you can see that upper left here that there was a positive correlation between DFA and QV value and DFA value grows stronger towards one and the QV value grows stronger towards lower values so here we have the opposite condition actually and after conditioning uh, it turned to a negative slope and um, I think that this mainly depends on that the DFA values hold. Uh -huh. yeah, sorry. I'm talking. The battery is empty. I'm talking about this curve here. It grows strong, stronger to, to, towards uh, one DFA value, and the other grows uh, stronger towards a lower value. Uh, but we got actually the opposite. So uh, this might indicate that that the cumulative value and DFA value ap ap um, apparently means uh, d different aspects of water ordering. And uh, after conditioning here, we found that it turned into a negative slope, uh, which means that it more or less represents the same aspect. But as I said, it mainly depends on that the DFA value were increased in all cases. And if we look at the spring water, we found a negative correlation from the start. And it turned out it's this one here. Oh, I think it's empty. No, it comes again. It's this one here. Uh, it has a neg sl negative slope in the beginning, uh, but it turns to be even better after conditioning. So it seems that DFA value is of some kind of importance here to, to uh, make an estimate of subtle qualities in uh, spring water especially. Uh, here are two images from our uh, thermal infrared imaging technology. Control water to the left and coherent water uh, to the right. And uh, you can see that there is a red shift, with, as we call it, uh, a decreasing uh, temperature with approximately 0 0.3, 0 0.4 degrees centigrade, <coughs> de dependent on this shift in coherent state. And perhaps you can also see that the ordering here is quite different from this one, and we found that fractality increased from 0.91 to 0.97. So with this as a lead, we decided to do the studies on 15 healthy individuals drinking ordinary mineral water or uh, conditioned mineral water. And here is two images from one of those individuals. Uh, the mean temperature here was 22.3 and 21.9. There is a, a decreasing temperature by 0.4 degrees centigrade. 
And you can also see the shift in fractality between the two images. So when we looked in all individuals, uh, first according to the temperature, surface temperature of urine, we found a decrease, significant decrease in uh, urine in uh, these individuals. So when we calculated the monofractality, here we can see that they also significantly increased. Even though the columns are quite high here, which indicates that there is a normal um, fractal organization in human urine. And that was, of course, expected because we are fractal objects. But it also indicates that there is some kind of, uh, we can call it stress load, that in some way uh, make a decrease or deprive the individual of this uh, normal self-regulative structuring of urine. So we also decided, based on these observations, to make uh, a measurement of the heart rate. Because uh, since we have a change in, in urine, it might be that the entire body is affected, that the, physiolog the physiological water, the cellular water, the body water is affected. And if it's so, we also could expect that we could have some kind of a physiological response. So therefore, we decided to, to measure heart rate. And uh, we found that there was a decrease by t two beats per minute, actually, between ordinary water and, and uh, conditioning water. So this indicates that there is a shift to a more restful condition. And uh, perhaps also that um, the energy is supplied not necessarily from uh, the normal route, so to speak, from the chemical route, from ATP in the mitochondria, but coming directly from water in the form of photons or in the form of electrons. And uh, if you calculate two bits per minute per year, it's around half a million or perhaps a million heartbeats less per year. So maybe it just, you can prolong your lifespan just by drinking the right type of water. It's just an idea. So I just want to conclude here to say that uh, we have some indications here that tap water, at least in our part of Sweden, related to Vincent factor is not recommended for drinking. And we also found that there was a negative correlation between DFA and QV values in spring water, and that might indicate that the both parameters actually show quantum relation, quantum connection, while in, in ordinary tap water we had actually the opposite result. And from the studies in urine, we found that healthy individuals actually improve according to the fractal organization in urine. And this also has physiological consequences that the body starts to rest in a more comfortable state. And I also think that we have some indications here that quantum state oscillations might be, might be of some importance for human health. And it also reminded me the other day here that Fritz Albert Poppy has done a lot of studies on healthy food and and also beverages, water, and he found that um, healthy food and beverage always emits coherent photons. So uh, I think we have a comparable situation here that the EFA value is actually also an expression of a more coherent state. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>